Cooper from Hamilton. And his outside, Ken Hamilton from Brantford driving the six car tonight instead of Jason Dixon. Starting 11th out of Dundas, the 21 of Jonathan Ayrton. Alongside him, the 26, it'll be Tim Newell going from 13th in the Jibs Action Sports. Let's landscape car 01, it's Tristan De Silva. And Jeremy May starts 14th out of Hagersville in the 16J, the summertime spray foam machine. San F. Toddy in the X machine from Welland starts 15th, Aiden Nye. And out of Simcoe, Ontario in the 88, goes 16th, 17th. Dave Goodacre from Brantford in the 05. Leroy Buscom starts 18th aboard car number 72. And Aiden Maynard from Chatham in the 20A starts 19th as Leroy Buscom goes around here on the front stretch. Not a good start to the night for Leroy Buscom as he backs that car down along Mr. Transmission Victory Lane. And we complete lap number one. Well, and you know what? That's good sportsmanship by Leroy Buscombe because he essentially now is not going to make the A main. He came to the green flag, and that's his night. We do not have consolation races tonight for the stock car portion of the program, so he could have brought out the caution flag but uh, thought better of it. That was a sportsmanlike thing to do. As we look through this field, I'm going to scroll down to who we've got listed as 15th. Right now, the 88 of 89 in the 15th spot. Got David Goodacre behind him trying to work his way in. Now Jeremy May, who's had to repanel that number 16J, he is going to the pit area. So another bad week for Jeremy May. Such a shame. Now I'm showing Cole Hardy. If I count by my eye, Cole Hardy is in that 15th position. So somebody must not have a uh, transponder on their race car because Cole Hardy is 15th in that final transfer spot. Out front, it is all thorn in that Burger Barn 360. And they are four wide deep in the field outside of the top 10, but these are important positions they're racing for. Jason Dixon gets a little squirrely in two. That allows Tolton in the number one to the inside and Rob Twitchett in that blue 69 to close in. He's going to drive to the outside. And strange Cole Hardy was not in our lineup either that but so he is there in a transfer position right now is quite a pack of cars little portion of this race yeah almost halfway through this qualifying heat for the mini stocks Kevin Thor Thorne checking out in the 360 good run for him and Mike Sarantaco is solid again so once they transfer into tonight's day main, they will handicap the field once again. There will be an inversion, I believe, of the top 16 from time trials. Sometimes we like to keep it mysterious as to why things <laughs> happen the way they do. We're just going to read the lineup on, as it is on the sheet. I mean, we're we're Ron Burgundy when it comes to that San Diego. John and Dottie working all over the back end of the 6X. And Mike Sarantacos for the runner-up position as they go down the back stretch. We see Kevin Thorne way out in front in that Burger Barn 360. Big pack of cars on the back stretch. And Rob Twitchett gets sent sideways. Tim Newell and Cole Hardy wrapped up in this. And the caution flag will come out. Yellow flag flies. Rob Twitchett. Tonight they did their timed hot laps. And then they have their qualifying race. And if you don't make it, you're done. Now, there are some provisionals. Is that correct? Yeah. There's So they take the top 15 out of each, and then the next two in track points uh, are supposed to get the, the two provisionals to fill out the 32-car field. Rob Twitchett was really hanging back there. He's got a long way to go here to close in on the field in that Cal Tire number 69 all the way at the back. Saren Taco side by side with Kevin Thorne as they race off at turn two. Saren Taco's hanging with the leader this time down in three and four as they come down across the stripe. It'll be nine complete and three laps left to go as the train forms in the front four, but then it's side by side with Sam and Toddy and Tristan De Silva. And there's contact a couple of times down there in corner one. Repeated contact. Jason Dixon in that, or sorry, Ken Hamilton driving the six machine. He's having some handling issues in turn two. That's been a trouble spot for him, so he could fall back into the clutches of that battle for 15th. And one car smoking, likely a tire rub. It is all sorts of interesting back there for the final transfer spot. As this time by, we'll see the white flag for leader Kevin Thorne, but there is a big gaggle of cars all fighting to get in at the back. 
One more time around, Kevin Thorne has opened up an advantage once again. Sarantakos in second over Schroeder, and if Toddy, and we watch the battle at the back to see who's going to get in. Right now, Dave Goodacre is one spot out, trying to battle his way. Can't get to the inside of Aiden Maynard. Coming off a four, Kevin Thorne will pick up the win. Second will go to Mike Sarantakos. Third at the line, Martin Schroeder over Sean Itati, fifth, Sam Itati, sixth will be Jason Tolton, seventh is Tristan De Silva, eighth, Jonathan Ayer. Ninth at the line was the 92 machine. And the Hamilton machine behind him. The 92 is Jeremy Cooper. And then Cote, Hardy, Crossgrove, Twitchett, Goodacre, and Aiden Nye. Now, don't forget Cole Hardy, his transponder not picking up, so he is within the transfer position right now. With the DeBoers on the front row. the corner for they come. The DeBoers will bring us to the green flag and we are on it. The second qualifier of the night for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Three wide. Mike Evers works the bottom. The Wiley veteran pulling out in front of the DeBoers down the back stretch. Big pack of cars are going to be four wide. Well, they thought about it. Three wide off of quarter number four. Chris Reitman tucks in behind. Mike Evers now looks to the outside of him in corner one. Reitman, oh, gets woed up behind Evers, who slows in corner number two. Reitman will take the lead. Evers still under power, but not as quick as he was. And he's had a stream of cars sail by him. Now in corner three, they all stack up. Kyle Wood got sideways, and now we've got the nose cone bent up on the 21H of Ryan Hiller, and part of it laying down the inside of corner number four. Dusty DeBoer and Chris Reichman side by side for the top spot. And you've got Wade Thorne, Tim DeBoer back there in positions three and four. Back stretch go the leaders. Dusty DeBoer out in front over Chris Reichman. Side by side with Tim DeBoer and Wade Thorne back there in position three and four. That debris picked up as the field went by, so nothing down there in corner four any longer is our own Clinton Jeffrey on <laughs> the scene and clean things up. Dusty DeBoer out in front over Chris Reichman. Wade Thorne. Tim DeBoer side by side for fifth right now. It's Fabio Oliveri and Tony Kelly. Fifth and sixth, seventh right now, Daniel McKay. Eighth is Christopher French. Ninth is Mike Taylor. Tenth, Kyle Wirt. Eleventh is Olivier LaRock. Twelfth is Mike Evers. Thirteenth, Paul Longboat. Fourteenth, Trevor Watt. And fifteenth is side by side with Ryan Hiller and Zach Buckwall. Cross flags up in the air as we complete lap number six. Dusty DeBoer. Oh, Tim DeBoer loses the right rear. That wheel is gone completely. The point leader in all sorts of troubles down in corner number one. And the wheel trying to race him down in there as you see it rolling into the infield. Question is, will it bounce over the wall? It looks like it will stay corralled in the infield. Tim DeBoer gets the car back into the infield as well and the point leader we've seen this twice this year now with the point leaders not going to make the big dance well and he'll well, have one of those provisionals thankfully as long as they can make the repairs do they have to complete all the laps to get the provisional i don't think so that's the point of the provisional i would imagine Dusty DeBoer out in front, Chris Wright in second, Wade Thorne third, Tony Kelly right there in fourth, and Fabio Oliveri fifth. The man that's had the most work to do has been Kyle Wirt, who went to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane one week ago. He's found his way from the back up to the sixth spot now. DeBoer getting by Cody Somerville. This time I will complete lap number 10. There'll be two laps left to go for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks in the final 15 spots to be set for tonight's main event.
Chris Reichman right now doing the old Elvis lip curl on the right front hood. Is that uh, right front part of the hood flapping up in the breeze, but uh, looks to be securely fastened down on the left side, so he should be able to finish it out. White flag goes out on the field for Dusty DeBoer. So one DeBoer having a real successful qualifier here as he works through one and two for the final time with a big advantage over Reichman and Wade Thorne. So if things hold true, then Tim DeBoer would most likely get that first provisional. And I think Jeremy May might be the next one that would get a provisional as he is the next highest in points that hasn't transferred. Dusty DeBoer gets the win. Chris Reichman second, Wade Thorne third, fourth Fabio Oliveri fifth at the line. Is Tony Kelly sixth was Kyle Wirtz seventh Olivier LaRock eighth was Mike Evers ninth Mike Taylor tenth at the line was the 21 H of Ryan Hiller then it was Paul Longboat back there with Trevor Watt Zach Buckwald and Daniel McKay and DeBoer wanting to waste no time he is driving that car back to the pits on three wheels they'll get straight to work here's how the lineup for Thunderstock qualifying cars will make up the HRW Automotive Mini Stock Feature Event. 15 laps will be the distance. The field takes shape behind the Strickland Brantford Chevrolet Pace Truck as it will pull off down the back stretch. Sam F. Toddy and Kyle Wirt will bring us to the double green flags. Kyle McKenzie ready to turn this field loose for the first featured night, a feature of the night here on Old North Racing, powered by Pinty's. Flags up in the air. Sam M. Toddy. The drag race with Kyle Work down to the corner number one. And Kyle Work looking to get back to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane. Big trouble on the front straightaway. Ryan Hiller in the 21 gets turned around the wrong way. Unbelievable. Nobody collects him. We stay under green. Out in front, Kyle Work will lead the pack. Sam F. Toddy back there in position number two. Tristan De Silva riding in the third spot. We've got some visitors here tonight that don't race weekly. That X machine of Sam F. Toddy and Olivier LaRock in the 91. Regulars down from Eric Villiery. LaRock with a lot of steam under that hood in the 91, and I'm not talking about any mechanical trouble. I mean, he's got some horsepower in that little four-cylinder 91 machine as he takes over the third spot from Tristan De Silva, and he'll look to make a move to the inside of Sam if Toddy. As we mentioned at the top of the show, only two drivers so far this year have multiple wins in feature competition, one being Dylan Westbrook in the sprints. The other is this guy that's out in front. Kyle Works got two wins this year in the HRW Automotive Mini Stock. He's looking to add to that here tonight. And Kyle Work has to be happy that they are the first feature of the night because, like he said, with that rear wheel drive car, he just puts his foot to the floor, doesn't lift, and steers his way through anything. So give him a wide open racetrack where he doesn't have to maneuver much through traffic, and Kyle Work is likely going to get the job done. First of the lap cars right in the tire tracks of Kyle Word as he looks ahead, sees Jeremy May going high in front of him. It looks like Jeremy will take that machine to the pit area as they, the entire pack of leaders swing by Jeremy May in corner two. Down the back straightaway, three wide, they fan out. Mike Evers on the inside in the 265. In fact, four wide, he had Kevin Thorne. Sean if Toddy in the middle and Tom Cote on the outside. Sorry, sorry, Martin Schroeder in the 60s. Kyle Burton keeping that advantage over Sam if Toddy and Olivier LaRock. Those are your top three. And oh, we've got Carnage over in corner number two. I see the nose panel has gone off of Chris Reichman's 93. Jason Tolton is slow down the back stretch. Well, he's lost the left rear. Tolton has. I'm not sure if the wheel came right off, but he's definitely got a flat. Nope, the rubber's still there. Just barely. That'll buff out. There's the nose piece to Chris Reichman's number 93. That team's had a rough go here in recent weeks. They've had to repair that car multiple times to start this season. The rescue team there on scene quickly to get things picked up and Quite a bit of contact took place coming off a of corner two, and we're going to get he a look at a little risky, but with re with risk comes great reward. And uh, so far, we've seen some great racing action come out of it. Kyle McKenzie now has the green flag in hand, and he is ready to set this field back to full song as they work off a of corner number four. Kyle Wirt will get back on the gas pedal and lead the pack down. 
Sam Eftati and that X machine just didn't get a great launch on that restart, but Wade Thorne sure did. He's going to look to the inside of Kyle Work coming off a of turn number two, and here comes DeBoer in the 23. Yeah, DeBoer is tucked in behind Wade Thorne as they work through corners three and four. Work your leader, Wade Thorne looks down low. Dustin DeBoer committed to the outside in that third spot. Now Mark Schroeder has cracked the top four as he works around Sam Eftati. As will Tristan De Silva. They're going four wide through corner two. Nice job by Tristan De Silva. He works his way into the top five. That lets landscape together. Number zero one, a young man at a water down. Kyle Burke will be lap number seven in this one. Laps left to go with Wade Thorne. Sideways in corner one, trying to hold Dusty DeBoer at bay. I should correct myself. Let's landscape together is out of water down. I believe Tristan De Silva is out of Burlington. Jason Tolton will rejoin the field. He's got the left rear replaced on back of trucks number one as they come off the corner four. That's going to stack things up behind him. Oh, Johnny of Tutty gets now into Tony Kelly who spins down into the infield. Point leader Tim DeBoer collected down to the entry of corner one. They're trying to get themselves sorted out and now we are under yellow. It was a case of guys not wanting to lift. The slower car of Jason Tolton came out of the pits after changing the left rear tire. And we just talked about you don't want to lift and lose your momentum. And all the guys coming off of corner four said, you know what? We are not going to lift. Schroeder back there in row two. Then it's Tristan De Silva and Sam Iftati back in row number three. Olivier LaRock and Sean Iftati was involved in that melee back there in the eighth spot and Mike Saratacos wow he dove down to the inside on that restart and passed three rows in the process how about cheeseburger to the outside squeezing his way between Tristan De Silva and the outside wall as they race down the back straightaway some bold moves on that restart everybody wanting to find Mr. Transmission victory lane off of corner number four Kyle Wirt will lead the pack with Dustin Moore back there in second. Wade Moore running third. Tristan De Silva with a nice run up in the fourth spot. Mike Sirantaco settling into fifth. And it's side by side with Cheeseburger and Olivier LaRock for sixth and seventh. So the top six or so have strung themselves out single file. Olivier LaRock working the inside in that 91 machine, but it seems. That outside line right now, of course, as I say, that Wade Thorne drives to the inside to make a move, but that outside line is where the momentum is. That's where the speed is. On the ticker right now, you're seeing Sean F. Toddy scored in fourth, but it is actually 0-1 of Tristan Da Silva hanging up there inside the top five as he completes lap number 11 and the battle for the lead heating up. DeBoer to the inside, just showing that nose down low. Kyle Work keeping his foot to the floor. Gets a nice run off the corner, but this is where DeBoer will try to wear him down. Lap after lap after lap. And if I'm not mistaken, I just saw a little fireball come out the 23 of DeBoer when he lifted into turn three. Keep an eye on that. Three circuits left with Kyle Work looking for win number three. Dusty DeBoer right in his tire tracks as is Wade Thorne. Top three breaking away just a little bit. Tristan De Silva kind of on his own right now in fourth, and it's side by side for fifth. Sean Iftati, Mike Sirantaco's duking it out. Iftati looking for that, excuse me, looking for that racing room, but every time you drop to the inside, you just can't keep the momentum up. And with these four cylinder race cars, Greg, we're going to see monster horsepower out of the 360 sprints tonight. These cars don't have the monster horsepower, so you've got to do it with momentum. White flag is displayed for Kyle Wirt. Nichols Auto Service number 19 with Dusty DeBoer right there ready to pounce. The battle is on with three quarters of a lap left to go. Wirt opens up the inside door for Dusty DeBoer. Oh, and Wirt slams the door shut, but DeBoer was already there. They race side by side into three. DeBoer pitches the car sideways. Who's it going to be? It's a drag race to the checkers. Coming to the line, Kyle Wirt will pick up win number three over Dusty DeBoer. Wade Thorne will cross the line in third. Tristan De Silva at the line with fourth, and Mike Sarantano. Taco somehow holds off Olivier LaRock and a cheeseburger shot at Tani for the fifth position. What a battle to the checkers. And now they'll make their way to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane.
Uh, second time back on live TV, and I think I'm kind of liking it right now. Sure. Who helped you get here tonight, Kyle? Uh, I've got to thank my sponsors, Eccles Auto Service, Gales Auto Aftermarket, Junkyard Jord, and I just picked up a new one. So we're going yeah, good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. I started to kind of middle of the pack, and once I got to Kyle, I was sticking with him better than last week, and I was hoping he would slip a little bit. He was bouncing a little, a little all over the turn two. And the last lap, he kind of got a little wide. I thought I could get underneath him, and then we both hit the bump in turn three, bounced off each other, and it just scrubbed off a little too much speed. But yeah, second, I mean, I can't complain about that, being in Mr. Transmission victory lane, that close to victory. 100%. Um, I think uh, last time I was up here, I was following these two guys again. And I saw them bounce around through the bumps pretty good, but I couldn't hold it through them either. And I was trying to get there, but I knew our uh, brand tractor, uh, Buckle Landscaping uh, Cavalier, wasn't uh, didn't have enough power through one and two to keep up with them. We were really fast at three and four, but you know I got to thank everyone for wrenching on this thing all week. Uh, my girlfriend especially for putting up with me in the shop, and my dad who uh, really really helped me put this new nose on the car and help it look good for uh, Ash weekend this week. There you have it. How about him for your top three? Kyle Wirt, Dusty DeBoer, and Wade Thorne get it done here, Mr. Transmission Victory Lane. Mr. There that's got the latest issue of Inside Track Motorsport News. You can get your subscription at InsideTrackNews.com.